So let's look at the sequential ionization energies for manganese. That is, how much energy does it take to remove the electrons one by one from the manganese atom? Now looking at those numbers there, you can see that they're very close together. If you want to take one electron, two electrons, even seven electrons off, the amount of energy isn't that much different each time. And so manganese can have oxidation state up to plus seven. Compare that to something like lithium. The first electron requires very little energy to remove, but the ones after that require much, much, much more energy to remove. So that explains why the transition metals have multiple oxidation numbers, because the electrons in the D block and the 4S block have very similar energies. So transition metals have variable oxidation states. Uh, the green box contains the transition metals, except for zinc. Zinc doesn't count on the new syllabus. Alrighty. Let's look at some examples. So iron can have an oxidation state of plus two or plus three. Copper can have an oxidation state of plus one or plus two. So manganese has the most variety in oxidation states of all the transition metals. So pause the video and work out what they are here. Lazy, I bet he didn't pause. Yep, it goes from plus seven all the way down to zero. The most of any transition metal. Okay, so in the data booklet, they say these are oxidation numbers. No, no, the oxidation numbers, according to the IB, are Roman numerals. These are oxidation states. So a transition element possesses an incomplete D sublevel in one or more of its oxidation states. Alrighty, so it looks like scandium and zinc are exceptions. But hold on, zinc is the only exception. So what about scandium? Scandium 3 plus, that has an empty d orbital. Ah, well allow me to explain. Those are the most common oxidation states. Scandium is actually plus 2 and plus 3. So looking at scandium in more detail, scandium 2 plus, which isn't as common as 3 plus, but it does exist, well that loses the electrons from the outermost energy level, which is the 4s, the fourth main energy level. And so there we go, there's an iron that has a partially filled d orbital, or has at least one electron in the d orbital. And then the 3 plus, well that loses all the electrons from the 3d to empty it out completely. Compare that to zinc, which is not a traditional transition metal iron. Let me draw in all those electrons. Now zinc, irons, only exist as a 2 plus charge. There are no other sort of zinc ions. So that's the fourth shell, and those are the third shell. So it's going to lose electrons from the outermost shell, the 4s, and those are gone. Now notice that the 3d doesn't have any lone electrons, so that means since that's the only ion, and the only ion has no lone electrons in the 3d, that's why it's not a traditional transition metal iron. Moving on to iron, iron, that has two oxidation states, plus two and plus three. Let's look at those quickly. So for the plus two iron, again, losing the valence shell, the outer shell, the fourth energy level, 4s. And losing one more electron gives me iron 3 plus. Now, as a general rule of thumb, it doesn't always apply, but it generally works. Any full, half full, or empty orbitals, shells, are going to be stable. Generally. So, copper that has two oxidation states, plus one and plus two. Now don't forget copper's the weird one, just like with chromium. So copper 1 plus is going to lose that lone electron. That's pretty stable. And copper 2 plus. That doesn't really fit with the pattern I said before that a full d orbital is stable. Okay, but that's one of the exceptions. The IB knows this, I won't ask you about it. 